What's up fools, how's it going? Welcome to another video and today we're going to talk about how can you make CGI look more photoreal? Two questions. What is CGI and what is photoreal? CGI stands for Computer Generated Images. So anything created on a computer in 3D or 2D and put into a movie, that is CGI. Visual effects, if you will. And what is photoreal? Photoreal means to make those things look as if they were real. We all know those shitty horror films we love so much, but most of those visual effects don't look real. Why? They just don't have the budget or the time to make those photo real. Other movies, they do look photo real. You'd be surprised how much is CGI and you think it's real. It's crazy. So now, how can you make CGI look real at home? I have 10 tips for you which can help you achieve that. Tip number one, use high resolution models. There's free models out there. For example, in Turbo Squid, where you can download them, use them for whatever you want. Sometimes you need to credit the artist, but sometimes you don't. But anyways, you can use them and really take your time to find the right model so it does look real. The problem is the higher the resolution, the better the textures and the materials, the slower the render is going to be something to keep in mind. And if you make your own models, same deal. The more details you're going to add, it's going to slow down your computer, but it's going to look better. Tip number two, use photos for UV projection. It means you're going to use photos. You can take them yourself or grab them from the internet. You use those photos and put them in your scene, project them on geometry, for example, a wall, Pull out the floor, pull out the walls, the ceiling, and build the simple geometry to create just like in the photo. I'm going to make a tutorial about that because it's somewhat a complicated process. But if you nail this, you can make any photo look photo real in CG. Incredible. Speaking of photos, tip number three, use HDR eyes. HDR eyes are basically spherical 360 images, photos, of different locations. You can have a living room, you can have a studio, outside, backyard, all kinds of different images. They're accessible on the internet. And those are gonna help you make your models look photoreal. Because you can use the reflection information, the lighting information, the shadows, all of those photoreal things out of a real photo onto your CG object. And those are gonna make your model look automatically photoreal. You can set up your own lighting too, and I would also do that in addition. But HRIs, you get a very good result with very little effort. But again, it's going to slow down your computer, so think twice if you really want to do that. I recommend it. Tip number four, add camera movement. And if you add camera movement, try to keep it realistic. What kind of camera movements are there in reality? We have like the handheld, we have shoulder cams, we have gimbals, we have steady cams, we have cranes, we have dollies. So when you have your camera movement and animate your CG camera, try to simulate one of those movements. You don't want to go too crazy that the camera is going through the wall, it's an upside down. There is a place for that. But if you want to sell an effect to make it look photoreal, Try to keep it simple. Always add a little camera shake. Even if it's a perfect dolly shot, even if in reality it would be perfect, no camera shake, I would still add a little bit if it's CG. And you can see it in the biggest movies, Marvel movies. Every time there's an explosion on the horizon, the camera wouldn't be shaking, but there's always a little shake just to sell the effect better. Speaking of camera movement, tip number five, use motion blur and depth of field. Motion blur is this thing, if you move something very fast, it's going to be blurry, right? And if the camera shakes, everything's blurry. You know, if your subject, if a car passes by, it's going to be blurry too. So you want to use this technique as an imperfection and implement it in your CG scene. Same thing with depth of field. Depth of field is this thing, you see how the background is blurry right now? That is because of depth of field. Because the f-stop is so high, it's on 2.8 right now. And if I wanted like a monster or something in the background, I would set up the same camera in CG, the same f-stop, and then I have the same blur in the background. If you shoot something on your iPhone, the f-stop would be lower, like 6. If you shoot something on a DSLR or mirrorless camera, depending on what you're shooting on, just try to simulate the same f-stop. 
I know it's tempting to go too high with the SO, like 1.0 or even higher, or the number is lower. But if too much depth of field is going on, it doesn't look real anymore. Tip number six, which is super cool, what you can do, just record real footage and then track it in Blender and add your models to it. That way you have real camera movement, you have real footage, and then you just add a few things into your scene and people are not going to see what is real, what is not real. If, of course, the model is good, using an HDRI, so real reflection, and that is going to help you to sell the effect. Where tip number seven becomes very handy, add shadows and keep them realistic. If the scene is full CG, you don't have to worry about it that much because all the lights and shadows are going to react with each other. But if you add models to your real footage, your models, they're, they're not going to cast shadow on your, well, they're not going to cast shadow on your furniture. So you have to either remodel this furniture so the shadow can hit it, which is fairly easy with your floor and walls. But when it comes to couches or chairs or anything, it can become very difficult. Sometimes I would recommend just replace a real couch with a CG couch or put some foreground objects right in front of the camera. That way, you first of all, you have like the cinematic look because something is like in the foreground, it always looks cool. But also you can cover up mistakes. So that is pretty cool. Tip number nine, compositing. I always recommend rendering your 3D scenes on different layers. You have your image, you have your shadow, maybe an alpha, maybe reflections, but image and shadows is definitely a must. You definitely should separate those because then you can manipulate the colors of your object and of the shadow separately. It happens to me a lot that I render a scene and I see uh, the shadows don't look like the real shadows in the scene and I need to tint them bluer or warmer or whatever it is. And then I can do that separately. Definitely helpful, uh, something I would recommend. And speaking of compositing, let's talk about tip number 10. While we are in the compositing software, which can be After Effects, Nuke, even in Final Cut or Premiere, you can do these things, or most of these things. But things I always do, or like very often, is I always like to blur everything. Because nothing is perfectly sharp. Even when you zoom on me right now, I'm not perfectly sharp. Why should my CG be? Blurring everything a little bit, just one pixel, two pixels, don't go too crazy. But you get the idea that really helps to sell the effect. And after you blur it first, you do all the other effects I'm about to mention, then you sharpen the image again. Sounds kind of productive. Maybe it is, but it adds those imperfections we need. In addition to that, sometimes I add some lens flares. For example, if I shoot towards like a light source and I add some objects in there, I want the flare in my lens to all also be on my objects. Otherwise, it wouldn't look real. And then in compositing, I very often add some additional camera shake, just a little bit, just to sell it more, to put everything more together. Even if it's track footage, I add some camera motion. You can do it just the position, but I also like to, to you know, wiggle the rotation. It just sells the effect better. Or if I have a monster walking through the gym and with every step, I shake the camera. Bam, 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 just a little. On top of that, I know it's many layers, but on top of that, I add some camera grain, like film grain, because again, our image in CG would be perfectly sharp and no grain. But when we film something, like you see this image right now, all of those dark spots here, they're probably having little noise. So it's always helpful to add additional noise on top of everything because it brings the entire image together. If you don't have any noise, I'm sure you can find some on the internet, but if you don't have any, I can give you the three different noise overlays I have. You can just download them. The link is in the description and you just put them on your scene, scale it to the right size, put them on overlay, adjust the opacity and done. And the very last step, usually I render out of After Effects and bring it up to Premiere, do some little you know, color adjustments, increase the contrast or remove the contrast, saturation. I play with all of those things a little bit, not necessarily to make the image better, just to make it more believable. Always depends on what you do. 
but this always helps. So those are my 10 tips to how to make your CGI look more photoreal. I hope that was helpful. And if you have any ideas to make your CGI more photoreal, please let us know in the comments because I'm sure lots of artists are going to go down to the comments and going to look for more answers. And if you have something to contribute, please let us know. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And that's it. See you in the next video. Toodle doo. Ah, damn it. It's like the second time in a row that I missed. I suck. See you later.